Good morning, this is Sean Govan at Honey Drop Farm. I'm treating for mites, varroa mites, my apiary. Right over there. And I'm using oxalic acid, ProVape 110. This thing is a wonderful tool. It goes very fast, very effective at killing mites. But it can also be dangerous if you don't use it right. So here's some safety tips. Number one, when it's plugged in, it's on. And if it's if it's on, then it's heating up. It gets pretty hot. If it's not plugged in, that doesn't mean it's not hot. It gets hot enough to, to melt plastic. So you have to be very aware at all times of where your cord is, unlike me. So you also need really thick, heavy-duty gloves. Normal gloves you use for beekeeping if you wear gloves a lot, it may not be thick enough. You don't want gloves with holes. Um, this is extremely important. Obviously, you, you hear about this a lot when you're talking about using a vaporizer, oxalic acid vapor, for treating for varroa mites on your bees. Um, you do need a respirator mask you do need proper cartridges. If it's just for filtering particles, like dust, it's not good enough. It has to be a cartridge that is for organic vapor, uh, organic acids. So, yep, see it says organic vapors on there. some reason it's not focusing but oh well anyway another thing that doesn't get talked about very much is it's very very important to have a shield for your eyes and your face uh, because the way this works is you put you put your oxalic acid in there it's still too hot to touch and then you pound it on and then as soon as you flip it over, the oxalic acid falls out of the lid into the bottom of this really hot uh, little pot there, really hot little container. And then the vapor comes out of here as the pressure builds up in here because it turns into a liquid and a gas very, very, very fast. And if this for any reason gets plugged, then the pressure will relieve itself by popping the lid off and you will have liquid burning hot or um, oxalic acid spewing everywhere. So if you have if you have that stuff spewing everywhere all over you, you don't want any of it getting on your face. So this is a more expensive mask but it is totally worth it for the protection and peace of mind. And it's really good quality. It, felt, it, it seals to your face very well if you're clean shaven. And um, so here's, here's another thing to help keep the, um, to, to, to help keep this from getting blocked. Always rinse it out with warm water after you use it. And do you see this bevel on the end? This end here is beveled. When it came from the factory, it was cut off straight and flat. Um, when you do that, it can butt up against a frame in your hive. You, when you stick it in the hive, it can butt up against a frame and plug it. And if it gets plugged, like I said, the top will blow off. So I think that it probably is really helpful to, um, to bevel it like that. I just took some heavy grit sandpaper and rubbed on it for a couple of minutes just so that if it does butt up against something flat, the gases will still be able to escape. 
through the pipe. Another thing I found out the hard way is, um, you know, the manufacturers of mat of respirator masks say, you know, don't use facial don't don't have facial hair when you use these because it won't get a good seal, and that's true. But they also say if you do have facial hair, then put um, put Vaseline around these surfaces so it'll seal. Well, I tried that on my last mask, and it completely ruined and destroyed the mask. Vaseline really messes up rubber. I tried Vaseline also in the gaskets of my feeders, my, my five-gallon bucket feeders, to, to get a better seal, and it made the gaskets huge. It made them a lot longer, a lot bigger than they, than they should be, and so they were no good and I had to throw them away. So anyway, be safe, kill those mites. Thanks for watching, Honey Drop Farm.